Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel in the first place. Today we have a Sarawax listener. This is Body Pillow by Daddy KFC on AO3. The link will be in the description, so go check that out. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. You stared at the now soiled body pillow, dejected. Kaminari shot up from his place on the bed, frantic at the mess he just made. Oh my god, listener, I'm so sorry. Uh, let me just... He looked around the room before grabbing tissues off the desk and coming back with them. You acted faster, stopping him with a smile. Hey, it's okay. No need to work yourself up over this. It needed to be washed anyway. Kaminari opened his mouth to refute, eyebrows knitted together in guilt. But you need this pillow. You have something tomorrow, and I know you have trouble sleeping without it. You lunging at his mouth, covering it with your hands, glancing to the others embarrassed. Mina looked away knowingly, while Saro and Kirishima watched curiously. You looked back to Kaminari, removing your hands, smiling. Really, it's okay, I'll find my way around it, no worries, I promise. You looked at your pillow, picking it up. I'll get this in the washer right now, then excuse me. You smile and exit the room, heading straight for the laundry room, sighing. Kaminari spoke facts, even if it was embarrassing. You put the pillow in the washer, starting it up, standing back. Tomorrow, you had a mock exam. Something for extra credit, of course, but you needed to be on your A-game. And your body pillow was a contributing factor, having it benefit to your sleep. You rub the back of your neck, sighing. Maybe you could suffice to hugging a regular pillow, or a blanket rolled up. You started your way back upstairs. No matter how good the idea, you still couldn't sleep without your pillow. You opened your room door surprised. Sarah sat by himself at your desk, twiddling his pencil and looking up at your arrival. The other's gone, he looked to the taller boy for an explanation. Oh, so they went back to their rooms to complete their nightly rituals. So, body pillow, huh? You smile, nervous at being alone with him but happy nonetheless. Yeah, it's fine. I'll definitely figure something out. I was thinking about it on the way up here. You sat down on your bed, bouncing some on the mattress. Saro turned to give you his full attention. I could just use my pillow or a rolled blanket, right? I mean, how different can it be? Saro hummed thoughtfully, smile forever present. He looked to you. I guess that could work, but I have something better. I think. Sarah rubbed the back of his neck, nervously, looking off to the side. You tilt your head curiously. What would that be? Sarah looked back to you, taking a deep breath. Uh, I was wondering if we could help each other. My room's super cold, plus my cold nature just makes it worse. Uh, so I was, um, wondering if you'd let me crash here together. You blink. Oh. Oh. Sarah waved his hands out in front of him. If you're uncomfortable with it, then that's fine. I was just saying, I don't want you to think I'm a creep or anything, but we could help each other out is all. You smiled, giggling, cutting him off. He looked back up to him. So you're asking if I'd be your heater and in return you'd be my body pillow. Sarah smiled, a faint blush making it to your cheeks too. I like it, sure, let's do that. Sarah smiles, standing up. Uh, let me go change first, I'll be back. You nod standing. Alright, see you in a few minutes. Sarah nodded, exiting and closing the door. You let out a nervous exhale, standing up and walking to your closet, and pulling out your regular sleep clothes and changing before sitting on the bed again. You nervously looked at the clock, after a second before standing up body jittery. You turn to clean up the area where you all studied, putting away your materials and wiping up any crumbs from the snacks in your palm and then dumping it in the garbage. After that, you look to the clock. The insatiable urge to sleep and to keep busy flooded your senses. Oh, uh, this, you were nervous. I mean, who wouldn't be? 
you would be sleeping with one of the boys from your class that also happened to be your crush, and this is one of the nicest and most open people you know. Nothing to be nervous about, right? Perhaps being nervous was a good thing. Maybe not. You looked up to the door when a soft knock echoed through the room from the door. You take a deep breath to calm your nerves. Taking small, nervous strides to the door, you open it. Saro stood there, extra pillow in hand, dressed in his sweats and a t-shirt. He gave you a smile. You moved to the side and let him in, and with a hesitant movement, he stepped in and to the bed, laying his pillow near the wall. You close the door, fidgeting with your fabric, watching him silently plop himself down onto your bed, sliding under the covers. Your breath hitched as your heart hammered when Sarah's dark gaze landed on you. His eyebrow raised. Are you gonna stay over there or come back over here? You're my heater, I need you, you know. Your face reddens as you turn to face the light switch, flicking it off quickly and slowly sinking back into the bed. You could make out Sarah's outline in the dark of your room, even with the curtains drawn. He was leaning up and on his forearm, waiting, presumably for you. You held your breath. You sat down carefully, slipping your legs under the already warming blankets and leaned back, head hitting the pillow softly. Saro, on the other hand, had a different plan. He reached out, hands softly landing on your opposite side, tugging you closer. You squealed as you were pulled closer to him. You can hear the smile in his voice as he spoke. I'm not going to do anything, trust me. I'm going to do you no good if you're all the way over there, and I'm going to get all cold if I'm way over here. He finally dipped his head down, pulling you into his open arms, legs weaving with yours, face burrowing into the crook of your neck. You could feel his eyelashes flutter close against your skin, his breath heating you up even more than you already were. Your hands lay against his chest when you finally realize... You're nervous, you blurt out, pressing your palm into his chest, feeling his heart thumping quickly. Saro hums, the vibration against your neck involuntarily sending shivers down your spine. You are too, Saro concludes, tightening his hold on you, making your heart skip a beat. Ooh, now you're even more nervous. You flush, burrowing your own face against him, not trusting your voice at the moment. You stayed like that, slowly wrapping your arms around him and relaxing. This was nice. You always thought it might be just you and your potty pillow for the rest of your life, but this was too good to give up on. This was better than any body pillow you had ever tried. Your eyes fluttered closed against his skin, soaking in his warmth. He still wasn't asleep, you noticed, so you decided to say something. I... I like this a lot. You spoke softly, breath hitting his skin. You could feel him smile against yours. I do too. This is better than any heating pad I've ever tried, Saro concluded, being a little more brave and rubbing his thumb in small circles on your shoulder blade. And this is better than any body pillow, you ended, sighing. If I knew you needed a heater, I would have asked sooner. He shuffled some. Sooner? You stiffen, starting to ramble. Well, yeah, of course, you're nice and sensible and comfortable too. It would help with... He trailed off, fingers pinching his shirt nervously. Sarah hums again. The feelings, he supplied. Your breath falters and he smiles again. I... I feel the same way, and I managed to get enough courage to actually... <laughs> this is weird. He mumbled something else, but you were stuck in your own little fantasy. Feelings? Sarah huffed. It was sad and long. I don't even know why you would like me. I'm just... me... plain. You gripped his shirt tightly. Don't even finish that. Sarah fell silent stilling his movements. Saro, you're amazing, funny, smart, and sort of a big brother to everyone. Sure, you might not stand out, but it doesn't mean that people won't notice your shine like I have. 
You pulled away, trailing your hands up to his cheeks, looking to where his eyes would be. Don't put yourself down because you feel like that. Because I don't think that at all. You're amazing. Saro stayed silent, so you continued. I noticed you our first day here. You know, it was immediate. In getting to know you and <laughs> developing these feelings was one of the best things that could ever happen to me, personally. <laughs> Your thumbs rub small circles under his eye, trailing slowly against his smooth skin. Saro, whoever can't see that you deserve the world is blind and to see what's right in front of them. You are you, so just don't change that. You finish on a slightly serious note, trying to get your point across to the boy, except you swipe your thumbs across his cheek again and freeze a bit. Your body seizes up as a drip tickles down your thumb. You just made Sarah cry. You panic, hurriedly twisting to grab a tissue from the side table, and twisting back to him, hurriedly wiping his cheek gently. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you cry. Please forgive me. Sarah grabbed your wrist gently, sniffling. You didn't make me cry because you're mean. You... <laughs> you made me cry because no one's ever told me that. You bit your lip, wiping his tears away with less of a drive, softly drying them. His hand never left your wrist, though, following your slow movements on his face. When he had finished, you set the used tissue on the side table before snuggling back into him. It was a silent conversation between contact. You both fell asleep in each other's arms. In the morning, you sat eating breakfast, smiling as you scrolled through your phone. It had been the best night's sleep since, well, ever, except Kaminari came in skipping straight for you. He put a hand on your shoulder and leaned in. So, what happened? All right, so that's the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed. Um, so as you might have noticed, the descriptions have been different. They include the summary and then all the previous links. It's just more organized. I also want to include content or trigger warnings down there as well. If you feel like I need to add any, let me know in the comments. I will add them as soon as I see it. Either way, music link, fanfic link, description link, and thumbnail art link are all in the description, so go check those out. I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, whatever, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye!